Okay, part two of drug discovery. What we're going to discuss in this lecture is going to be the whole concept of H bonds, the difference in water between a vacuum, how to do your calculations, and how the calculations might compare to actual delta G values for binding. So when it comes to binding, and you're inside a solvent, okay, the solvent we're going to deal with is water. The first step is going to be desolvation. Initially, the ligand is going to be bound to the solvent, and it forms H bonds with the solvent. The process of desolvation, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be breaking up these H bonds. In this example, we broke up three H bonds. And basically what you're doing is you're putting energy in. And what this energy is doing is it's going to be breaking your existing bonds. Okay, So breaking bonds between your solvent and your ligand. Okay. When it comes to binding, what's going to happen is you're going to be forming bonds, okay? So you're going to release energy, and the reason why we're releasing energy is the first thing that we want to say is we're going to be forming bonds. And then the second thing that's actually going to happen is you bury your hydrophobic surface, surface okay? So you bury the hydrophobic surface. Okay, so in our example, we broke up three H bonds with the ligand, and we formed three new H bonds between the protein and the ligand. Okay, that's binding. Notice that the top ligand or the top uh, H2O ligand bond was unchanged. Okay, now H2O versus a vacuum, right? In a vacuum, the most important thing to recognize is you don't have desolvation. Okay. So since you don't have any desolvation, you don't need to put any energy into breaking bonds, and the net result is you're going to release more energy from the binding of a ligand and a protein, okay? Essentially, when something's solvated, it's really happy, okay? It's stabilized by the water, and you need to put some energy to break that up. If it's in a vacuum, you don't need to do, you don't have to pay that energy penalty, okay? You don't need to pay that energy penalty so more energy can be released from step two, binding, okay? With H2O, you're going to have desolvation, and you will also have binding, okay? Whereas with vacuum, there's no desolvation, and then there's still binding, okay? So if you look at the values of the H bonds, what they're worth, they're always worth more in a vacuum. And the reason why they're worth more in a vacuum is because you didn't need to pay the energy penalty in order to accomplish desolvation. Now, calculations, okay? Calculations for the polar interactions, what you wanna do is tally up the types of bonds and how many of each of those bonds. So calculate how many charged ion dipole interactions you have or how many dipole dipole interactions you have, tally those up. And then you're going to multiply it by the table value and sum those up. That'll be your delta G due to polar interactions. Make sure you're using the right delta G values based upon in a vacuum or in H2O. Second thing you want to look at, hydrophobic inter or hydrophobic surface burial. Every single squared angstrom of, surface of hydrophobic surface area is worth negative 25 calories. So what you wanna do is multiply the surface area by negative 25 calories. Typically, this surface area is gonna be given to you in the problem, so if they say like 200 square angstroms of hydrophobic surface gets buried, then you just multiply the 200 times the negative 25 calories. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is differences between the calculated and the actual delta G of binding. So oftentimes when you calculate it, you're gonna get a higher value than the actual value of delta G. And the two things that you wanna keep aware of is the first reason why it might be lower is because of imperfect hydrogen bonds. The table values are for an exactly perfect H bond. That's pretty much never gonna happen inside a real protein, okay? There's gonna be distance factors, there's gonna be steric factors, like the conformation's not gonna be perfect. So because you have imperfect H bonds, that's gonna lower the actu actual delta G you see in the real world. And then number two might also be an expected E, a, a higher than expected energy cost for desolvation. So let's say this ligand is more strongly bound to the solvent than we expect. You would have to put a greater amount of energy in because of that, the delta G, the energy released upon binding, 
is actually going to be less than what you calculated. Remember, your calculations are for the perfect scenario, it's for the ideal scenario, the real world, it's often not as big, it's not as good as the ideal world. Okay, so that about sums it for H-bonds and H2O versus a vacuum.